I'm Johnny Mac with a single topic today. Today is Johnny Mac's top funny things of the year slash top stand-up specials. It's all one big list where I've incorporated some funny things around the stand-up specials. I will rank the stand-up specials. The other stuff is just in the mix. And I'm going to go top to bottom. So what was the funniest thing to watch this year? No doubt the best thing comedy-related of 2022, far and away, George Carlin's American Dream documentary. I savored this thing. I saw clips of Carlin I'd never seen before. I couldn't get enough of it. It was so good. Kelly Carlin and team did a great job putting that together. If you have not seen George Carlin's American Dream, that is number one far and away. Next up, Weird, the Al Yankovic story. You can watch it for free on Roku. It's one of those things that a couple minutes in, you're like, oh, this is really good. And it is really good. And it's funny and it's quirky and it's ridiculous and it's fun. And I loved it. So seconds on the list. Weird. Next up, a whole bunch of stand-up specials. What is my favorite stand-up special of the year? Shang Wang. Sweet and juicy. You'll find that on Netflix. Uh, he's got a Hedberg vibe, and I'm a big Hedbergian. I don't know if that's a word, but it's not a clone. Like, he's less like Mitch Hedberg than Mitch Hedberg is like Stephen Wright, if that makes sense. But he's definitely in that family tree. Like, if we had a tree of comedians, there'd be a line that had Richard Pryor, then Eddie Murphy doing his Richard Pryor cover act. Think about it. I'm not being jerky. Think about it. Richard Pryor wearing a red plastic suit or whatever it was made out of in his special. Eddie doing the same thing. The voices Richard does, the voices Eddie does, it's a cover act. It's a really good cover act. And if you're my age, you loved Eddie Murphy, but it's a cover act. And then you can go down that road and make your way to Chris Rock and some others. And then there's this other tree uh, that Stephen Wright's probably at the top of. And if you go down there, you can find Mitch Hedberg. You can find somebody like Dimitri Martin in there. And I'd put Shang Wang in that tree now. But he's not doing a Stephen Wright. Shang Wang, Sweets and Juicy on Netflix. Best stand-up special of 2022 says Johnny Mac. Second best stand-up special of 2022, according to Johnny Mac, is Atsuko Atkatska's The Intruder. Just watched that recently, and it's really good. And I bounced it off some people whose comedy opinions I respect, and they came back to me and said, you know what? It's really good. I liked Shang Wang's even more, but Atsuko's special The Intruder, that's on HBO Max, Watch it really good. Third, this is going to be controversial because people do not like this person. I was quite impressed by Hassan Minhaj's The King's Jester. It's on Netflix. The knock on him is at times he's a little tryhard, and the tryhardness comes out during the special for sure. But I felt like he had something to say and he had strong commentary. And there's a couple cringe moments where you're like, all right, you're trying just a little too hard here. You're getting a little too serious, but I really like that special. So that's the third best special of the year. And number five overall on what Whatever this list is. Next up, Andrew Schultz Infamous. You'll find this on YouTube. My commentary on this all year has been it would probably be higher on the list. It, I don't know if it'd make it up to number one. It would probably jump Hassan's special. My challenge with it has nothing to do with the artist. He put it up on YouTube, so it's free, right? So watch it for free. The price you pay is there were commercials every, I don't know, eight minutes, ten minutes. And they would just, you'd get in a groove and you'd be feeling the special and there'd be some commercials. Uh, I, I, there's a version of this without the commercials that I'm sure you can get somehow that probably makes this special even better. But I really struggled and it kept taking me out of it and it knocked it down a couple pegs on my dumb list. But Andrew Schultz Infamous is really good. Also really good, Sam Morrill's Same Time Tomorrow. That's on Netflix. It's a similar-ish vibe to Andrew's special. Uh, I think if you like one, you would like the other there. I feel like Sam's really a rising star. Like you guys are probably like, yeah, we all know Sam. I don't think the general person on the street knows Sam yet, but I feel like he's about to like really pop. My sixth favorite stand-up special of 2022, and this is a strong recommend. So as I'm looking at the list and I've been ranking these all year, and I'm like, wow, this fell to number six because it's really good. Norm McDonald's Nothing Special. This was on Netflix. This is the special Norm wanted to get on tape and recorded it at his kitchen table because he knew he was dying. And boy, we got one more special out of Norm we weren't expecting. It's really, really good. So I know I've mentioned five other specials, but like for a, something that's number six, this could be number one. Like this is really good. Next on the list, that's my time with David Letterman. This was a hybrid show where he'd have comedians come out and do 
a pretty short set and then sit at, not the couch, I guess they had two chairs on a stage, bit of a hybrid format, uh, but I thought it worked really well and I really enjoyed That's My Time with David Letterman. Some of the guests on there were Sam Morrill, Rosewood Baker, Robin Tran, Phil Wang, who's fantastic. So you should watch That's My Time with David Letterman on Netflix. Number eight, Trevor Noah, I Wish You Would, on Netflix. That came out recently as well. Liked it a lot. Trevor is having a little renaissance here. You know, not everybody dug his Daily Show. I liked his stand-up comedy from before the Daily Show, so it was great to see Trevor on stage. That hour is a lot of fun. The closer is really strong, so I really dug that. Number nine, Eliza Schlesinger's Hot Forever. Uh, This was further up the list, and then a couple things came in late and just knocked it down to nine, but really, really good special like that. That's on Netflix. And number 10, Neil Brennan's Blocks. My review on that was starts just a touch slow, and I almost bailed, and I'm glad I didn't because it's one of those specials that has something to say and thematically all comes together. Really nice job, Neil Brennan. We'll take the break here and I'll give you the rest of the list. Continuing my list, the 11th best stand-up special of the year. Bill Burr, live at Red Rocks. I love Bill Burr. As Bill Burr specials go, it was the like not the best Bill Burr. It would be, if it were a U2 album, it would be pop. A lot of fun, digging it, but not as good as the last couple of things. Bill Burr Live at Red Rocks on Netflix. Now I'm going to give you three in a row that are not stand-up specials. Johnny Mac, why didn't you make two lists? I don't know. I just make a list. I do this every year. It's just top funny something comedy something. I don't know. I'm just giving you a list of things to watch. Peacemaker on HBO. Did you watch Peacemaker? John Cena as a bad guy, good guy, good guy, bad guy. Peacemaker is hilarious. Take a flyer on that one if you haven't seen it. That's on HBO Max. Welcome to Chippendales with Kamel Nanjiani. That's at Hulu. I tell the guys at Trivia every Wednesday how much I like Welcome to Chippendales, and they give me a look, and it's okay. The shirtless dudes aren't going to jump out of the TV and give you a lap dance if that's what you're afraid of. Welcome to Chippendales on Hulu. Fantastic. You should watch it. The Pentaveret on Netflix with Mike Myers. I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, this is going to be horrendous. Why did they make this? And then I hit play, and I was like, ah, you know what? This is actually pretty entertaining. It's Mike Myers doing what Mike Myers does well. That's The Pentaveret on Netflix. Give that one a shot. The 12th best stand-up special of the year, David Spade's Nothing Personal. It was just fun. Nice, solid hour on the couch. Enjoying it. Netflix, number 13. Ramesh Raganathan's The Cynic. Watched that recently on Netflix. All of a sudden, my Netflix is putting so much international comedy in front of me. I didn't even know this one was coming out. I sat down on a Saturday night, I think it was. And this was like, had the big box. And I'm like, okay, Netflix, I'll hit play. Really liked it. That's a good one. Next on my list is Reboot. Mac Packer, Keegan-Michael Key stars in Reboot. That one is on, what's that on? Hulu. I love the pilot. At one point, I had reboot way up this list. But as I got deeper into the series, the quality, I don't know if I just got used to the gimmick or the episodes weren't as strong. So that slipped as the year went on. But I like reboot a lot. You should watch that. The 14th and 15th comedy specials of the year. I put these as a tie because I watched them kind of close in time, maybe during the same week, and I couldn't decide which one was better than the other. So let's give a tie to Nick Kroll's Little Big Boy on Netflix and Tom Papa's What a Day on Netflix. Kroll uh, is a good storyteller, a little too much with the stomach gurgling humor for my taste. Tom Papa, the first two thirds is really strong. Uh, He did not land the closer. So those are kind of the same. And everything I'm mentioning here, you know, is, is David Spade so much better than Nick Kroll or, or the next thing I'm going to tell you? No, they're all, these are all kind of the same, but this is how I have them ranked. Number 16, Aaron Chen's If It Weren't Film, Nobody Would Believe It. That's on YouTube. You probably don't know who this is. Hopefully you trust me at this point. Aaron Chen, If It Weren't Filmed. Nice little special. 17th best special of the year. Fortune Feimster's Good Fortune. I was into it, and then she tells a long engagement story and then follows it up with another long story, and it kind of lost me. As a comedy snob, you can't do two long stories back-to-back like that. You need to go rat-a-tat-tat in the middle there. So I think the pacing was off there. Uh, So we're we're down a tier here. So I'd put that middle tier, go back to where I said David Spade, and draw a line under Aaron Chen. Now we're down a level from that. 18th best special of the year. T.J. Miller, I love him. And there was some buzz on Dear Jonah. It's on YouTube. And I don't know, it never really hit the heights for me. And it was on YouTube. So it's the same commentary I had on Andrew Schultz special. Just the commercials kept taking me out of it. I, again, I get what a free special on YouTube is. And everybody's got to get paid somehow. I have no problem with the commercials. But I don't know. Could somebody take 
two seconds and maybe place the commercials after a chunk, like find a natural beat and then do it and not just have a commercial come in the middle of a joke. Next up, Joe Coy's Live from L.A. It was a riot. A couple sections went too long. Same comments I just made. You got to go rat-a-tat-tat. You can't keep doing big, long chunks. Gets fatiguing on the audience. The 20th best special of the year, and I'm surprised knowing me that this one is this slow on Netflix. Pat Oswalt's We All Scream. Love Pat Oswalt. But the middle part of this special, the crowd work section, sucks. Give me a razor blade. I'll cut this special down to a tight 35 minutes, but it's an hour. Sorry, Pat, man. Love you that this one didn't fly. I don't know. I seriously don't know how you guys put out that middle section. Not strong enough at all. And the 21st best comedy special of the year, in my humble opinion, Gabriel Iglesias, Stadium Fluffy. It was nice enough. Gabe does what he does. Everybody loves Gabe. I worked with him one time. Cool guy. Specials, fine. I just didn't care. Now, one of the things that took me out of it when I hit play Netflix told me it's two hours long. And I'm like, two hours? Surely you don't mean two hours. They did. And I'm like, I had... so there was a mental block there for me, too. You know, you hit play and you're kind of feeling something. OK, there's 37 minutes left. I'll watch it. In this case, oh, there's an hour and 37 minutes left. I got to go play video games. So that was Gabe Iglesias for you. All right. Not on this list because I haven't seen them. I'm just telling you they exist. Maybe they're the five best specials of the year. I haven't seen them. Dean Cook, Jeff Dunham, Matt Bronger. Joel Kim Booster and Randy Feltface also put out an hour this year. I think that's on YouTube. Haven't seen any of those. I did see Randy Feltface's 21 special. I went back and looked. I'm like, wait, was that this year or last year? It was last year the one I saw. I like that a lot. So I want to be fair to Dane Cook, Randy Feltface, Jeff Dunham, Matt Bronger, Joel Kim Booster. And tomorrow on Netflix, Chelsea Handler has one. So it's possible those are the six best specials of the year. I'm just telling you what my list is. Also, not on my list at all. Gerard Carmichael's Rothaniel. On a lot of lists that I've been reading to you and I will continue to read to you between now and the end of the year, that one's number one. My commentary on a stand-up special is, it should be funny. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. Hey, hit the comments. If you're on YouTube, hit the comments. Join the Facebook group, Daily Comedy News Podcast group. You can tweet at me at DCN Pod. I would love to know your thoughts on all this. It's one man's list. You might think my entire list is garbage. That's fine. It's just a list. See you tomorrow.